Hello, hello, welcome to another episode of History in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons, my British Rail Critics, and of course, my underwater train finders. You are the reason why this content remains! Mountaineering? Sure, we'll go with that. And today, we are going to discuss an often overlooked but horrific disaster that occurred in 1910. It involved two trains, a town in the mountains of Washington State, and an avalanche. This is the story of the 1910 Wellington Disaster. Wellington, Washington, the state, not DC, was an unincorporated railroad community that sat on part of the Great Northern Railway in northeastern King County, Washington. It was founded in 1893 in the Cascade Mountain Range at the west portal of Cascade Tunnel, which was under Stevens Pass. The community was never particularly large, and since it was unincorporated, it was kind of out in the middle of nowhere. The only way for the community to get into contact with the rest of the country was either by telegraph lines or the railroad. And for a while, that was totally fine. The people who lived there were totally content with their little community and enjoyed a relatively peaceful existence for over a decade. That was, of course, until the 1910 blizzard. On February 23rd that year, an unprecedented amount of snowfall slammed into Wellington. They'd been used to snow. They lived in the mountains, after all. But this was not an average blizzard, even for that time. At certain points, it was laying down a foot of snow every single hour. And some of their snow gauges measured 17 feet at certain points. Wellington had a small power plant on its own, but it wasn't really equipped to handle this kind of situation. The railroad did have rotary snow plows, and Great Northern's railway crews worked nearly non-stop trying to keep the tracks clear, both for Wellington's sake and the railroad in general. And the rotary snow plows worked really well at first, but the nature of the blizzard meant that trees and other debris were included in the icy mix given how much snow had fallen. This harder debris jammed the rotaries, making it difficult for even them to get through this blizzard. Eventually, seeing no other option, the owner of Great Northern shut down the Cascade Division, surrendering to the weather emergency. The blizzard lasted nine days, finally relenting on March 1st, 1910. However, the blizzard gave way to rain, thunder, and lightning, because apparently God was trying really hard to punish Wellington for their presumed hubris. I don't know what they did to deserve this nonsense. On that day, Seattle Express number 25 and the fast mail train number 27 were stuck in Wellington waiting to reach Seattle. The weather had made it too treacherous for them to continue, so the trains were halted. The citizens of Wellington, seemingly being a kind bunch of people, actually gave shelter to about a hundred plus extra people that were stranded on the passenger train. However, some people did remain on the train instead. A handful of the passengers, as well as most of the crew. The crew for the fast mail mostly remained on the train as well. But as all this was going on, the train sat Something terrible was happening up on the mountain. The warmer temperatures and the rain had combined to loosen the incredible amount of snow that had built up from the blizzard, and this resulted in an avalanche. As any mountaineer can tell you, an avalanche is nothing to mess with. They are exceedingly dangerous, capable of destroying all but the sturdiest structures and killing any living thing that is unlucky enough to be in their path. Just after 1 a.m., this particular avalanche was started as the result of a lightning strike on the side of Windy Mountain and a 10-foot-high mass of snow, half a mile long and a quarter mile wide, rushed towards the town. This was already bad enough, but on top of all that, just a few months previously, a forest fire had actually destroyed much of the foliage on the slopes above the town, meaning that there weren't even any trees there to impede the avalanche. About the only fortunate thing that happened during this was that the avalanche managed to miss the Bailets Motel, which was where many people had taken up shelter for the night. However, it slammed into the railroad depot. The impact of the avalanche threw the trains 150 feet, or 45 meters, 
downhill and into the Tai River Valley. The locomotives were turned over on their sides and rolled multiple times over. The cars either did the same or were simply crushed outright. Only one clerk on the fast mail train survived. 19-year-old Alfred Hensel only lived because he had chosen to sleep on the other side of the car he was in. The other eight men on board were opposite him and the avalanche broke that car in half, killing all of them but sparing Alfred. The passenger train fared no better. In total, 96 people were killed. 35 passengers, 58 Great Northern employees, and three other railroad employees that were in the depot. Only 23 people survived, and the citizens from the entire town came out to try to help as best they could. But due to the terrible weather conditions, they had to abandon the operation. It wasn't until 21 weeks later after the disaster, late July, the last of the bodies from the accident were retrieved. To this day, it is still the deadliest avalanche in the history of the United States. The accident was a gruesome reminder of the power of nature, to be honest. No one was really held directly at fault, because given the standards of the time, the railroad hadn't really done anything wrong. Nobody had. It was a freaked act of God. The following October, however, the town of Wellington was renamed to Ty, as they didn't wish to be associated with the tragic disaster. That same month, Great Northern Railway opted to construct concrete snow sheds to shelter the nearby tracks. They were specifically designed to withstand avalanches, so if something like that did ever happen again, there'd at least be some kind of barrier permanently in place. They'd served that purpose for nearly another 20 years, however, in 1929, a second Cascade Tunnel was completed. This tunnel completely bypassed the line that went through Wellington, now Ty, and the depot itself was closed. The town's only real source of employment gone, it was quickly abandoned as well, and most of it was eventually burned down. The only thing that remains of the town today are some of the old tracks and the snowsheds that have now been preserved as part of the Iron Goat Trail that travels through the mountains. It, and the few articles about the incident, are the only constant reminders and memorials to the victims of the deadliest avalanche in American history. With that, a special thank you goes out to all my underwater train finders. Thomas Ward, Lord Captain Von Thrust III, Some Dude 267, Brightline Blue, Joshua Long, Ohio Trucker 1, Royal Hudson 2860, Lord Hoth 444, Arthur Roy, Benjamin Owens, Panzer Kitsune 131 232, Mr. Black Rose, Tribal Typhoon, Master of None, Josh Johnson, and Lock Kraken. Till next time, this is Darkness on Abidual Afond. Farewell.